it's a hard thing to put your body through. It's a hard thing to go through emotionally. There's a lot of shame involved. There's a lot of uh, feeling out of control. And what began to happen at that point is that instead of helping me cope with the anxiety and overwhelm that I was experiencing, it was actually adding to it. My name is Heather. I am a self-care and empowerment coach. I work with people around the world, helping them make the positive shifts and transformations in their lives that they want to see happen. I've had a few requests from people recently asking me to share a bit about my journey and recovery from eating disorders, which I, I'm going to be sharing today. And I want to put that out there right away because the the content of this video might be triggering for some individuals. The other thing that I want to say right off the um, right from the start is that I am going to be including some links and resources for family, friends, for individuals who are living with eating disorders to take a look at. So if you need support yourself or if you are a friend or family member who wants to offer support to somebody in your life, I encourage you to check those out. If you are not feeling like this is a video that will serve you in this moment in your life, click away. Uh, I encourage you to tune in and become aware if any part of this video is not serving you. Um, I'm highly aware of the amount of information about eating disorders there is out there. I, from personal experience, am aware of things that may or may not trigger people, and you never know what's going to trigger somebody. So I, I wanted to put that out there right away and encourage you to keep tuning in to ensure that this video will be helpful and not harmful. This video is going to be my personal journey with eating disorders. I'm going to share as much as I feel comfortable sharing. There are definitely some things that I won't be sharing. And the reason why I am sharing some of these personal stories is because as a self-care and empowerment coach, I believe it is important for everyone to know that in order to show up and do the work that I do with people, I have to have been and be doing my own work myself. And this is one aspect of my life where I have done a lot of work and continue to do a lot of work so that I can show up for myself, so that I can maintain healthy boundaries, so that I can take care of myself on a daily basis. And self-care is a daily practice. It's not one and done. And I'm sharing these stories so that people know that, one, they aren't alone, and two, that when I am coaching people, and I, I am not a therapist, so I do not offer therapy or counseling services around eating disorders, um, but I do meet and work with people who have struggled with food and body dysmorphia and eating disorders in the past. And so... Um, that's where that's where all of this is coming from. My journey with eating disorders began at a pretty young age. I remember always feeling heavier than other kids. I would compare myself to other kids a lot. Um, if you saw my previous video where I talk about my struggle with anxiety, and I'll include a link for that in the corner above and in the description box below, you'll know that one of the major life events that I experienced was when I was 12, about to turn 13, we moved to Germany. And I grew up in a U.S. military family, and it was my dad, my mom, my sister, and I. And we moved overseas to Germany. And as a kid, I would get really overwhelmed with new situations. And I was really overwhelmed by uncertainty. And not really knowing what to expect when we got to Germany, as much as, uh, you know, my parents tried to prepare us, as much as the military tries to prepare you, you never actually know until you are there. 
And one of the ways that I could deal with my anxiety and I, I could deal with my overwhelm was by controlling food. And at that time, I had also started dancing. Um, so I was taking a lot of ballet lessons, a lot of modern lessons or contemporary. Um, and I remember being pretty... Uh, I won't say obsessed, <laughs> but I remember being pretty enraptured by the ballet body and, and sort of this idea of what a dancer's body was supposed to look like at this time. And, you know, you mix that, you combine that with the fact that we had just moved and, and that I didn't handle uncertainty well. And it was just kind of this magical, um, this magical potion <laughs> that, um, opened the door for an eating disorder to to become my my uh, coping mechanism of choice. And my eating disorder journey started out with restriction. So I would restrict the amount of food that I would eat. Uh, and over the first three years of high school, my freshman, sophomore, and junior years of high school, that restriction became increasingly intense. To the point where my junior year of high school, I was actually eating very, very little each day. And at that point, my parents knew something was, was up. Uh, and they were doing the best that any parent could possibly do to support their child who clearly something is going on, but you're not quite sure what. And it's scary. It's it's scary for, I think, any parent, any loved one, a family member, a friend to witness a loved one going, going through this experience. Um, and so after my junior year, we actually took a trip back to the U.S. to look at colleges and universities. And I remember my parents at one point um, sitting me down and saying to me, you know, if, if you don't change, if, if things don't start to change, then we're not going to be able to let you go away to college, go away to university. And there was no way that that was going to happen because I really wanted to go to university. I found this, this university in Ohio that I just had fallen in love with and I wanted to go. And so I was going to make sure that, you know, things changed and, and I was going to be able to go. And that's when my eating disorder took a turn and I would eat, but then I would purge. And so my eating disorder morphed from anorexia into bulimia. And it's a hard thing to put your body through. It's a hard thing to go through emotionally. There's a lot of shame involved. There's a lot of uh, feeling out of control. And what began to happen at that point is that instead of helping me cope with the anxiety and overwhelm that I was experiencing, it was actually adding to it. So it was no longer the, the food that I was using to cope was no longer actually serving me the way that it had historically. But I had gained enough to leave home and, and go to Ohio to go to university. And my family was back in, in Germany and my first year of university was really hard. I turned to food and my, my bulimia was in full swing and it only got worse throughout university. Um, by my senior year of university, I was really in the thick of, of bulimic behavior and it was impacting my ability to, to show up well for myself and others. Um, I was dancing a lot. I was taking a lot of classes. I was working on my thesis. Um, and, you know, by the time I graduated, I was really burnt out. And so I spent the summer interning for a theater group, and then I made the decision to move to Chicago. And, uh, I moved in with a friend of mine, and I remember getting really sick that winter that I moved. I could not get better. Um, I had the flu, and then the flu morphed into something else, and then it morphed into something else, and 
I remember being really sick and crawling on my hands and knees to get to the washroom when my roommate came home and found me on my hands and knees. And she said, um, she said, I, you have to get help. She said, this actually can't continue. And she said, I will hold your hand and take you somewhere that you can get help. And I have to say, her showing up for me that way, I, I needed somebody to show up and just tell me how it was going to be at that point, and she was the person to do that. And so I found um, a great team of people. I had a dietitian, a psychotherapist, uh, a therapist, a nutritionist, <laughs> and I got connected to all of these people through the Awakening Center in Chicago. I'm not sure if it's still in operation, but they were um, they were the key to me actually starting to tune into myself. The other thing that happened is I actually quit dancing. Um, I had danced with two different companies in Chicago, and in 2006, I believe, my memory's a little fuzzy, it was 2006 or 2007, I made the decision to stop dancing. So I had been working full-time, dancing for two companies, and I stopped dancing. I, I stopped doing this thing that I loved so much, but I also knew that if I didn't get myself out of that environment, my behavior would not change. And that was one of the hardest things that I had to let go of, but it's also the best decision that I think I've ever made for myself. And so I went really hard into recovery. I was attending group therapy. I was doing one-on-one -on -one therapy. I was meeting with a dietitian. I was meeting with a nutritionist. Um, I had changed jobs and had found myself in a better working environment with a nonprofit. And my behaviors started to decrease. They weren't completely gone, but they had certainly diminished from where I was my senior year of college. And, you know, I went for my master's degree. And the entire time that I'm in Chicago, I'm, I'm doing this work and I'm working with, you know, various people in the city to... Um, get the support that I need, get the help I need from, from professionals who understand what it is I need. And it was the first time where I started asking myself some questions about who I was, what stories was I living by, what my truth was, why was I actually doing the things that I was doing? <laughs> why was I making some of the choices I was making? Was it because I wanted to or because I was trying to make other people happy or make other people comfortable or take care of somebody else or make sure that their needs were met. And one thing that I do know is that a lot of individuals who um, who struggle with eating disorders is that we can, we can tend to be people pleasers and we will oftentimes put ourselves last on the list. It was also when I first heard the word empath and I began to educate myself about what an empath was and how I could work with my my abilities, my empathic superpowers, <laughs> and um, and it really began to, all of that work enabled me to see myself in a different way, where I was, I was this independent person who could make her own decisions, who really only needed to make herself happy, and didn't have to be responsible for everybody else's well-being and everybody else's emotional state. I still had some behaviors that were emerging, particularly when I was feeling anxious or overwhelmed or when a change was occurring. So I became aware of patterns and habits, and I became aware of when my disordered eating would get triggered. And then I I met my now husband. Um, he was living in Canada. He's, he's Canadian. I was in the U.S., and... Then I I transitioned to living in Canada with him, and then we moved from from a town called Moose Jaw in Saskatchewan to Winnipeg, Manitoba. And our year in Winnipeg was really challenging. There was a lot of uncertainty during that year, and my eating disorder um, really flared back up. Um, I had the tools and resources that I needed to not make the choice to engage in that behavior, but because that behavior had served me so well in the past, I thought, oh, it's going to serve me well now. And guess what? It didn't. And I was 33 years old and standing at our kitchen counter in Winnipeg. And 
I remember clearly making the choice that I was no longer going to engage in eating disordered behavior. I cannot tell you why I made that choice at that moment. I knew that I was tired of that pattern emerging in my life. I know that I was very aware that the behavior was no longer doing what it used to do. It did not make me feel better. It made me feel worse. worse. And I know that at 33, I was ready to live differently. I did not want to be an individual who, in order to cope with her anxiety and overwhelm, needed to turn to food to to manage those emotions. I, I knew at that point that I had other ways of, of working with what was happening. And so that day I stopped. I was 33 years old standing in my kitchen when I chose myself, when I chose to do something differently, when I chose to actually use the tools, resources, and support that I had to stop engaging in behaviors and patterns that were not serving me. I say that because we can feel like we don't have control. We can feel like we don't have a choice, but we actually do. All of us have a choice. All of us get to make decisions every day about what we do, who we interact with, where we show up, how we show up. It's been seven years. I'm 40 as I record this. I'm going to be turning 41 shortly. And I can honestly say that over the last seven years, I have a greater appreciation for what my body is capable of. I have a greater understanding of the power of habits and patterns and how they serve us and how they don't. I have increased empathy for individuals who turn to things to help them cope with overwhelming emotion. I I get it. I, I know why that happens. I'm sharing my journey with my eating disorder so that people who have also experienced this or are experiencing it know that they aren't alone and know that there is a choice. We can choose to get support. We can choose to get help. We can choose to show up for ourselves. That we can choose to not engage in this behavior. That there are things out there that we can do instead that actually are done from a place of love and appreciation for ourselves. And I hope that me sharing this is helpful for someone. If you know somebody who's struggling with this, I hope it's been helpful. Um, If you have questions for me, uh, I'm happy to share a bit more if you want to contact me directly, and I'll put my contact information um, in the description box below. And again, all of those resources for getting support, for getting the help that you need, I'm going to include those below as well. And so if you need support, if you need accountability, Make the choice for yourself to get that because there's a different way to be. And and maybe your thing isn't an eating disorder. Maybe it's something else. We actually can't do it alone. So I hope this was helpful. Stay ignited out there. Love yourself. And I will see you soon. Bye.